mistress of my love This empty ruin sits in falling rain It's all been blasted from above And all my past was just a show As good as it's been, or let's the last of it all know If everything I've gained was going to be lost Why would I risk myself at this cost? And all the speed with which I found you love Well, that's just how fast it's gone away And in the sky I see a broken dove And now there ain't no more to say A little confusion is my constant friend A friend now isn't so kind I thought I'd have you until the end Yeah, but having is a state of mind Look out there, you'll see a cold, hot land Where sun and peace it used to rain Without the touch of your guiding hand Well, you know it's never been the same Sadness in me yet, yeah, but I tell you that it won't be long, long before I felt a wealth of good inside, surplus of happiness to give. But bitterness now. Yes, indeed. That's a little bit uh, end of an era from our new EP that will be coming out hopefully soon, assuming I can herd the cats that are my band together. Hello, everyone. Welcome, everybody, to a special bonus short cast, um, a Tuesday night cast that I do not often do, um, but I am able to do it tonight. And uh, I am going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, which is the first time I've ever played these games. So hello to everybody who's here tonight. Hello to Zodiar Kel. Hello to Rogan. Hello, Weasel Lord. What's up, Wavy Lions? Hello, Sherlock. What is up, Shay? Hello, Pav. What's up, Ocadrian? Hello, Mr. Jazz. What's up, Mosky, hi, Money. What's up, Mercurius? Hello, Leshrac. Kata, what's up, Kata? 
Cat, good to see you, dude. What's going on with school and stuff? What's up, man? I want to hear how, how school is for you, man. What's going on? I miss you, dude. What's up, Game Misconduct? Hello, Elswin. What is up, Devious Crypto? What's up, Cracked? Hello, Corey. What is up, Arcades? Hi, Apples. What's up, 1298? Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Nedowin. Hello, Lego Freak. Hello, Satolbo. Hello, Fallen. And, hello, of course, hello, Demiser. What is up, everybody? Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. It is a pleasure to have everyone here. Um, earlier today, we got um, schooled by House of Hell. <laughs> and boy, did we ever get schooled by it. But that's okay. Um... And we may come back to, uh, we're definitely going to be going back to the Fighting Fantasy game book series again. That's no question about that. I don't know when the next time is that we're going to go back to House of Hell, because honestly, that, that book is so brutal that I don't know how well suited it is for a chat involvement. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but in any case, you're doing great at school and kid is so far okay. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because now Kata has two kids. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Kata Bassus, who does not stream anymore, um, Kata was the guy who got me into Twitch in the first place. Uh, so Kata was really kind of my mentor. Really, really good streamer. And um, it's a shame. I miss watching his Twitch streams, but I understand that he had to focus on RL and uh, has been doing really well in RL, it sounds like. And now he's got two kids. So that's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear it. It is wonderful to have you in here, and it's wonderful to have everyone in here. I'm glad to see people uh, hanging out um, with us. So, hey, chat is too stupid. That is not what I said. <laughs> not what I said, Okadrian, oh, you misquoting bastard. Um, but anyway, objection! That's what I'm going to be saying. So, uh, yes, it's, again, House of Hell, it's good. It's just brutal. Like, I, I just don't know that it's well-suited for sort of the chat environment, um, is what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with the intelligence of chat. It's just that, you know, lots of people making different decisions at a particular time and all that kind of stuff. So, we should downgrade to House of Heck. There you go. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. They're letting you teach intro to gaming programming? Nice! See, man, you're going to make your way back to Twitch one way or the other. Like, six months from now, you're going to be back in Twitch, but it'll be all this backdoor stuff that actually happens. So, um, good to see you, man. Yeah, pretty much you did. I mean, we, listen, 1298, we basically, you'll have to, I, I'm uploading the VOD as we speak. Um, we died about eight times. Like, we died every way there is to die. And I promise we are not leaving the Fighting Fantasy Gamebook series again, uh, like, behind. We are not doing that. Uh, we're going to be playing Talisman of Death the next time we play Fighting Fantasy. So, trust me, this is not at all a departure from Fighting Fantasy Gamebooks. It's just that it's the second time that we played House of Hell. We played a good long time the first time we played it. This time, we put a good five hours into it. Um, and just, I, I, it's going through it over and over and over again is going to be difficult. So there is going to be a VOD as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've actually gotten a new one. What was the new command, gentlemen? There it is. He just put it up. House of Hell. Nathan Lane enters the House of Hell. The Victorian door violently slams behind him, forcing a meep from his chap lips before he collapses out of the Oriental rug. Game over. That was pretty much our experience with Nathan Lane. So it's it was brutal, yes. So, um, but now we are moving into Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, we are going to be playing this until its conclusion. Uh, and then I'm going to be moving on to the Ultima Underworld um, run. I want to finish that up. And then after that, I have to decide what I want to do. I might play Dragon Age Inquisition. I might play Assassin's Creed 4. I might play Trails of Sky. Those are three good possibilities, so we will see about that. The other thing is that I have now heard back from the PR person for the Shadowgate stuff. So I should know, hopefully by Thursday's cast, the exact date of Shadowgate, the interview. My guess is that we're going to be doing it within a week. I was going to say next week, but the problem is next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, next Thursday, anyway, is Thanksgiving, and so I don't know. Maybe I'll do it Maybe I'll do it Wednesday night. I might do it Wednesday instead. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, I will. If not, then we'll do it the week after Thanksgiving. But in the next couple of weeks, in any case, we will do the interview with the Shadowgate developer. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. And then again, we have an interview coming up with the um, Pillars of Eternity devs at Obsidian as well. So that is what we are looking at going forward. Oh, my God. Devious. Devious. Not only. Yes. Okay. Adrian did do that. Not only Devious, we actually named him Nathan Lame, L-A-M-E though, okay, remember we adjusted it. Devious, not only have I heard of the board game Tales of Arabian Nights, not only did I have the original Tales of the Arabian Nights, I got the new Tales of the Arabian Nights made by Z-Man Games, and I now have a reputation in the writing community, Devious, because I have made it a tradition to bring that to Gen Con and to play Tales of Arabian Nights with people, and if people get into it the way that I like them to, it is an epic, epic game. It is so badass. I love Tales of Arabian Nights. If you go in trying to competitively win it, it's not going to work out. But oh dear God, is it a good game if you just have fun. It's so great. It's so, so good times. So good times. So many good times. Okay. 
Um, yes. Now, uh, so I, it's funny that you mentioned that, Devious. Okay, so, um, anyway, welcome into the stream, guys. Um, and again, uh, if you guys are able to join our Steam group, exclamation point Steam group, that is super helpful. Good to see you, Lakota. If you guys are able to tweet out the stream, exclamation point CTT would be helpful to do that. And last, if you guys are able to, um, check out my YouTube channel where you can find the VOD of House of Hell that I just did, you can check that out by doing exclamation point R of Tube. So any of those things would be helpful. Yeah, that's it, Devious. It's what you get for missing me at two Gen Cons. I love Tales of Arabian Nights, dude. Such a good game. So good. Did you know that there's a Star Trek game that's like that, Devious, that's based on the same principle? And like an original Star Trek that was sort of like that adventure game. There's some people who do not like it, but oh god, do I love Tales of Arabian Nights. So good. Anyway, um, so thanks, Fallen. Um, yes, so that's basically the deal. Um, I've given you guys what we're doing. And now, this game. Now, that I just sort of a heads up to my mods, and I noticed gentlemen mentioning it. I have never played any of these games before. The only thing I did for this was play like the first two minutes so that I could make sure I tested it on stream. Um, I have bought this game for uh, WiiWare um, because I don't own a Nintendo DS, so I, nor do I have a way to capture it. But I do have a Nintendo Wii, the console, and so I actually bought this on Nintendo WiiWare. Um, I have decided that I am going to emulate it um, to because I literally own it, so it's legal. I own it. But the reason I'm emulating it is because it's a hell of a lot easier to stream on PC by doing it that way. That's the only time that I'm going to talk about that, okay? It's not that it's legal or illegal, it's just that we want to stay away from discussions of emulation um, on this channel and on Twitch in general. But I am doing it completely legally, I own this game, I own it, I bought it, I bought it yesterday. But again, um, I cannot play, it's not easy for me to stream it that way and be able to do everything I want to do. I can stream it, but it's very difficult as far as handling chat and everything else. So that's... that's that's basically the drill. Um, what's up, Snip? So, uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney is being played. Um, but uh, going back to my mods, but this is, again, a, um, a blind playthrough. So please, 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 no backseating. Now, again, you guys know the drill. If you guys are guessing along with me, awesome. If you're saying, I wonder if this means X, Y, or Z, awesome. I'm totally down with that. That's great. But if you're doing something where you know for a fact that the answer is X, Y, and Z, please, please, please do not tell me that. It's not fair. Um, I don't mind backseating when I ask for it. So if I say, I don't know what to do, guys, what should I do? Then you can definitely do it. Otherwise, though, please do not spoil things for me. But again, if you're guessing with me, if you're like, I wonder if we should do X, Y, or Z, that's totally cool. I'm totally down with that. Okay. Um, with that said, all right, guys, let us, uh, let us do what we need to do. Oh, first of all, let me do it out of the right window. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this and let me turn on that. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, and, uh, yes. So now we are ready to go. If you just figure it out, uh, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, if you, if you're smarter than me, I'm, I mean, you know, 1298, who knows? I'm, I'm certain that it's possible that more than one person on Twitch is more intelligent than I am. I like to think I'm a smart guy, but I'm sure there's people who are. Certainly, I've said you guys are the best viewers on Twitch. I don't make that up. You guys are the best viewers on Twitch, you know? So I'll, I'll do the best I can. Thank you, gent. Thanks, Wavy. Backseat gaming is best when you have no clue either. Exactly, exactly. Now, I am also going to do the voices for this, guys. Now, um, I'm going to do the best I can with the voices. There will be times when the voices I do aren't quite right at first for me, and I will have to adjust the voices a little bit, but I'm going to do the best I can because that's part of the fun. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot of uh, narration and reading going on. I know, I do need the bow You know I have a bow tie too, Demiser. I do actually own a bow tie. And you guys know that I have it because you've seen me when I did at the Comic Con and I broadcast it on Twitch. My standard outfit when I go to a convention or a conference is the vest. I own like six or seven different vests and pocket watches. I have two pocket watches. Um, so I usually mix and match that way. So I usually do wear that. The only reason I didn't do it now is because I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> I didn't feel like getting into a vest and doing all that stuff at night. But that's, but that's the deal. Um, I, Kata, you've, you've been gone too long, my friend. We're not allowed to do that. If I do this, look, if I do that, oh, if I do that, all of a sudden I might be in violation of Twitch's terms of service. <laughs> oh, God. There you go. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> You're funny, bro. All right. Bow ties are cool. I'll tell you guys a quick story. <laughs> yeah, I reported. I'll tell you guys a quick story before we get started. 
two bass plastic bags of garbage. What do you mean? Um, so, uh, two, uh, quick, uh, two quick, uh, two bits, one quick story before we get started. So the reason that I love pocket watches and vests so much is that, um, I may have told you guys before that I debated quite a bit in later in college and then in graduate school, I debated and I was pretty good at it. I was nationally ranked and, um, I was internationally ranked. I, uh, ended up, um, being the second runner up public speaker in the world in the public speaking competition in two years. And I ended up breaking as the top American speaker a couple times. And so things like that. Anyway, um, so I was, I worked really hard at it. It was like my favorite thing that I ever did in college by a wide margin. It was, I loved it. So, and the reason I got really into it was, I remember I first found out about it my senior year of college, and I ended up going to this um, Harvard, to a debate tournament at Harvard. And I went two and three, and, uh, you know, the team it did, you know, not great, but it was, it was okay, whatever. Um, and I went to the out rounds, which are basically the playoff rounds. So I remember I was in the back of the room at Harvard University, right, at this big sort of, you know, auditorium. And I'm watching a semifinal round. And there's like 150 teams at this thing, right? It's huge, the Harvard tournament. And um, I'm watching a round between a Yale team, two guys from Yale, and um, a team from Canada, specifically Hart House. And I'll never forget, I know the guy's name to this day. His name is Mike DeBramo. And they're wearing the bow tie and the vest and the watch and the whole business, right? Um, and uh, so they're doing this thing on the United Nations. And going into the final speech, I won't go into details about what a debate round is, is like kind of shaped like or whatever else, but it's parliamentary. So basically you have two guys against two guys, uh, two people against two people, I shouldn't say, not just guys, two people against two people. And um, then that's the way the debate is resolved. And there's a, a panel of judges that decides who wins. So um, going into the final speech, it's pretty clear that the proposing team that had proposed this case about the United Nations was losing badly. Like the opposition, which was Yale, had done a great job and had like really sort of, you know, proven like proven their case really well, right? So we go into the final speech, the rebuttal speech, and Mike DeBramo stands up to deliver it. And he walks up with this Canadian accent, and he's got the ponytail going on, he's got the vest, he's got the watch, he's got the whole business, right? He walks up to the front of the room and he's like, I've heard some interesting things today, ladies and gentlemen of this house. I've heard some fascinating things about the world. I've heard some fascinating things about America. But you know what I haven't heard? I haven't heard anything about the way the United Nations works. And it's time for the opposition to get a five-minute lesson. And he pulls off his suit jacket, and I kid you not, he turns around and goes, bam, on the table, right? And he turns around and rolls up his sleeves and launches into this freaking fire-breathing brimstone, like everyone being like, you know, type of deal. Unbelievable. It was the coolest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yes, I know I swore. It was that good. It was ridiculous. And I remember watching that, and at the time I was like 22 or something like that. I remember watching that and being like, I want to be that person forever. <laughs> like, it was the coolest thing. Now, they actually didn't even win the round, but they came really close. They lost the round, like, two to one, and going into that last round, they were losing it wildly. Like, they were totally losing the round. That, that speech was ridiculous. He was so good, and when I saw that, I'm like, I want to be that guy. And so, <laughs> vest, pocket watch, bow tie, you know it, man. So since then, I've moved away mostly from the bow tie. But the pocket watch and the vest, oh, man, I'm telling you what. And that was when I was a first-year debater. That was my first-ever tournament that I went to. And that sort of, that hooked me forever, man. I, I loved it going as well. So it was Matthew McConaughey preparing for his time to kill roll. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, man. It was so amazing. It was, it was so amazing. Yeah, exactly. It was like this boy's about to drop some. But I'm telling you. Like, it was one smooth motion, too. He's just like, it's a time I gave them a lesson. Blam! Like, you know, turns around and everyone's like, <gasps> and even the opposition was like, you know, like, they were, it was it was the best. Oh, it was the best. All right. With all that said, now that we've done that, it is time to actually get into some gameplay. So let's do it, people. The time has come for Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. 
Now, I've done the best I could here on the layout as well, um, and I hope that people like it. I have increased the logo size. I still feel like there's some empty space on the left side of the screen that I want to add in, but I don't want it to be too cluttered, to be honest. So I may make, you know, some movements and adjustments around it, but what's up, Z-Zombie? Hi, guys. Um, but anyway, um, but that is, that's, that's what we're looking at here. So Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, let's go. Objection! All right. Got my thing going, got my, my effects module. Let's do it up. It's probably too loud, so I gotta turn that down a little bit. Which I will do. The first turnabout. Let me know if that's too loud, guys. It sounds too loud. Is that too loud? Is that too loud? Do I need to turn it down? Too loud, too loud. Sorry. Too loud, too loud. A bit too loud? Okay. Let me turn that down a bit. Sorry, guys. Still adjusting. Is that better? Is that better? Better? Is it still too loud? Please let me know, because I'm going to keep the adjustments, but... Too loud? All right. Is that better? How's that? Is that better? How's that? I'm going to play that again. Hold on. I'm going to... Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to start that again. I'm going to start that again. All right, let's see how this works, shall we? Okay. See if that's any better. Is that better? Louder? Is that better? Good, bad? Better? Okay. Cool. Episode one, the first turnabout. Oh, man. Got real already. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I gotta find someone to pull this pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number Two. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Oh, oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Hiya, Chief. Hiya, Chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! What, isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Hey, Dragonspear. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick! Hey! Uh, hey there, Larry! Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? W what's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished? I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you.
My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Well, that and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Botts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? It, yes, Your Honor, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Uh, thank, thank you, Your Honor. By the way, I saw somebody just came in. I think you said that they love this game. I'm glad, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've heard really good things about it. Thanks, Shadow. I'm doing what I can. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. By the way, why am I exactly telling the, ju the judge that I'm nervous? It's probably not a good idea, right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Okay, well, that's Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. I would love to get that wrong. He's like, you don't know your own defendant? Please go. Oh, thanks, Weasel. I'm trying. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. I'm glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Oh. Uh, no. No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim! Uh, of course I know the victim's name! I, uh, I just forgot. T temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Uh, look, the defendant's name is listed in the court's record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Court record. Attorney's bad, what is this? No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. My eyes gonna go. Oh, wow. Too soon, okay, Adrian. Too soon. Uh, let's see. Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death, cause of death, loss of blood due to blood trauma. Profiles. BFA. Larry Butts. Cindy Stone, the victim in this case. All right. Easy enough. Cindy Stone. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Cinderblock. Um... The victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was? It was a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. What's up, Sat? You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Could you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Nice, I got a statue. <laughs> statue added to the court record. All right. Right. 
be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. I notice that every time I see Mia, she's talking about touch something. I'm like... Alright. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Oh my god. I'm already like, uh, what do I do when a witness shows up? <laughs> Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! Or we were Romeo and Juliet, like, like Cleopatra Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped! She just wasn't taking my phone calls! Or seeing me! Ever! What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Um, also I want to say one other thing, guys, about the voices. I'm not going higher on Mia's voice because, believe me, there are plenty of female characters in these games. So, she strikes me as more of the lower voiced, I got this, I got this handled thing rather than higher. So, fear not, okay? I got lots of female voices to do. Prom I promise you there'll be volume and tone and pitch changes, okay? <laughs> in fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Yana, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. What's up, Bendix? Exactly. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude! No way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes. Older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Ms. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah. Larry is a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oh, eh. Uh. Dude! Nick! What do you mean, irrelevant? That cheating she-dog? I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! Oh, God, Butts. Really? Really, Larry Butts? Really? Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh, boy. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh, well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Oh, he went... What do I do? Stop. I'll send him a signal. Like a dog. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, I'll just have to remind you. I've got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. 
Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. See you, Law. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowett to the stand. Mr. Sowett, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then, I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Objection, nobody actually uses the word quailed in a regular sentence. I thought to call the police immediately. All right, so this is where you have to make sure that we can catch like sort of inconsistencies in the testimony, I think. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Nearby park. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. Wait a minute. 1 p.m. It was 1 p.m., but she died 4 to 5 p.m. Uh... What? She died between 4 and 5. How is it 1? Okay, so how do I raise an objection then? Maybe I have to wait for it actually to give me that option? The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Alright, let me see if I can actually... Nope, 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 nope. How do I do an objection? How do I do an objection? I gotta figure out how to do an objection. Uh... <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta figure out, can I do it in cross-examination or can I object? Do I do it in cross-examination? Yeah. I have to listen to, okay, okay, cool. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record. Oh, hold on a second. I want to look at this stupid thing. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Okay. Okay. Got it. Now, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes. Um, y yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Uh... What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Or how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. Alright, let's do it. 
cross-examination, witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. All right, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm hurry because he left the door half open behind him. All right, what is the, oh, present, what is press? What does it say, when it says press, what does that mean? I understand that present is evidence. What does press mean? What does it mean when I press? What does that mean when I say press? No, I can do it right here. But, um, no, it's fine. I know how to do it. I just want to know what that means. I ask a question about that line. Is If I ask, if I press him, does that immediately... Because I know that if you miss something, you lose one of these things. If you press him, does it hurt me? Okay, it can hinder me? Okay, right, right. Door half open behind him. All right, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Look inside the apartment. Oh, the game will warn you if pressing the witness will carry penalties? Okay. Because right now, the the main thing is this. The main thing here, all right. The phone in our apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no. No, it, it wasn't, right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you? Oh, oh, that? I can explain that. Uh, there was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Alright, let's see. Ah, uh, <laughs> hold it! One o'clock p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. He's about not to be. One o'clock p.m. Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Yes, it does, Mia. Present some evidence to contradict him. Oh, I will. Yeah, give me the autopsy report. Present! Objection! Objection! You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... Uh, no body to find at 1 o'clock p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, uh, that! Oh, uh... <laughs> this is trivial! The witness really forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I... uh... well, I, um... gee, that's... that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Okay, yeah, Judge is like, Wait, I, I remember now! Would you care to give your testimony again? 
witness testimony, the time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Uh, how is it coming from the television when there is a blackout, big fella? I don't think so. Hop Jackson! Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? How do I do the objection? Hop Jackson! Oh my god. It was three hours off, wasn't it? I, I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program using her solar-powered VCR. Not likely! That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Oh man, I'm gonna nail you on this, I'm gonna nail you to the wall. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Could you really? Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Yes, I do. Cross-examination. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Really? Hold it! You said heard, not saw? Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, least of all my watch. Hmm. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. Oh, I said! The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm. I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue your testimony. I still got this. There was a voice saying the time it was probably coming from the television. Is that so? Because you know what I have to say to that? This is a blackout objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Uh. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Uh. Ah! I. Well. Uh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? In before solar powered indoor VCR. Uh, no, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Uh, quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather... distraught. Uh, uh. My, my apologies, Your Honor. Um, it, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. <laughs> Get serious. Witness testimony. Hearing the time. Actually, I, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Oh, my God. Actually, it was brought to me by a flying stork. Jesus Christ, dude. The <laughs> judge is like, nope. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Really? Was this battery powered? Yeah, uh, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. What? You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. Um... The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Cross-examination. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Okay, now hang on a second. Hold it! strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry, I, I only just remembered that table clock. A table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Okay, hold on a second. First of all, I don't even know if there was one. Secondly, how did it, what is it, battery powered? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used to hit the victim. Not likely, because you know what I have to say to that? OBJECTION! Wait just a moment. 
The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Yana, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submit it as a statue. My apologies. I thought you said he saw the clock, bro. You lose again. You lose again. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Yes, I do. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the, let's see. Uh... I'm not going to be able to prove that he knew the victim. I'm going to say he went to the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. That, oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. I'm your dad! What, what's, that's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... That day, I... I... Never... Look, I... The clock, I heard... No, I mean, I saw... Saw... <laughs> what? Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn! Burn, give him death! Order. Order in the court, I say. Uh, Your Honor, a, a moment, please? There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawad heard was definitely the clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Hmm. Okay, let's see. Examine the clock's batteries. I don't know why that would be the case. Try sounding the clock. Or ask the neighbors. Let's try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 1125. Ah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit... Try to talk your way out of this one. Uh, ha, 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 ha. You forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, I can configure to accept microphone input so I can use the shouting objection feature. Oh, can I? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I do that? 
Oh, that'd be badass. Microphone settings. Use connected physical microphone. Oh, I wonder if this will work. While it may seem that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. That's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Y yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately... What? This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Ugh. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Wait, what? There's nothing I can do about it now. There is something. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Maya, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I, I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I can think the clock would be slow because he hit it and broke it. I mean, when he hit it, he did that. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing that, I mean, when he actually hit it, the clock would have been slow as a consequence. So there was that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't she somewhere? Yeah. Wasn't she some, wasn't she somewhere? Why was he talking? Never mind. Where the hell had he been? She had been somewhere. I know she had been somewhere. Paris! She was in Paris! She was in Paris. That's why. Yes, I do know. Because she's in Paris. What's up? Paris! Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock is running slow. Can you see it? Passport. Take that! Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 o'clock p.m. here, it's 1 o'clock a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Order. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client, he, uh, was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find a true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty.
And with that, the court is adjourned. Yeah! It turns out that Frank Sowett was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... What's up, D-Zero? When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawat let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawat grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Thank you, Messiah. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I need that sound, the Law and Order sound. Bum bum! I need to hit that. Oh my god, I need a soundboard. Wait, where is it? Where is it? I need that. Do you think I'm going to get muted if I do this sound? I need this sound. Do, can I, am I going to get muted if I do that? Can I please do that sound? Every time I see the August 3rd, 232, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. <laughs> please, please, I've got to do it. Oh, oh, God. Oh, man. I also need to get, well, that probably I would get in trouble for. Oh, I'm so tempted. Oh, it's so good. All right. Okay. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Phew. I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. She's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry? You're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good, but wait. No, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I, I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, uh, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Uh, actually, I, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You, you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry... Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Oh. Huh. Oh, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm 
glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never surrender! <clears throat> Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Uh, oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Oh, yeah! And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Yay! Brand new episode has been added. Nice. All right. Okay, so what do you guys think so far? How are people feeling about this so far? What's everyone's take? You like? Up, down? You enjoying it? What's everyone's take so far? Congrats, you beat Phoenix right. I win! <laughs> no, I know there's other cases. You guys like so far? Yeah? You having fun? Okay, Adrian. Cool. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not game over, Dragon Spear. There's another episode. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. It def Yeah, it's a lot of fun, Renan. I can see why people like it. It's cool. It's cool stuff. It needs more Maya. They just, just make sure you have re-raise in haste. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm glad. You just got to over a thousand words for my term paper. Awesome. All right. Nice, man. I know, I know, I know. You just wait. I'm going to bring in other women. They'll be fine. I got other women voices. I'm, I'm telling you, someone like that is not going to sound like, Oh, Phoenix, I really like what you did in there. And I really, I mean, they're not going to sound like that, man. Good stuff. All right. Okay. All righty. We are going to go on. What I like about this now, now I have a question, actually. That was obviously the kind of the tutorial one. Typically, how long do these episodes usually last? Like, is it a couple of hours per episode? Is it like one episode, two episodes, or one hour, two hours, half hour, five hours? Like, how long does an episode usually last in something like this? Yes, yeah, Fallen. Your opinion has been noted and repeatedly stated. I heard you. Um, so, yeah, so how long typically is it, it does it take? No, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean like, I mean like in terms of actual playtime. I'm talking about actual playtime. Two hours? Okay. Because I'm trying to decide if I have time to do one more. And I can save it in the middle though, right? I can save it about one and a half hours. Okay. And I can save it, right? So I can save it in the middle. Okay, cool. So I can save it typically? Like, I mean, in the middle of it, I can save it and come back to it if I had to, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. I figure they get longer as you go farther on. I figured that was as much, but... Yeah, you can? Okay. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to guess then, be a rebel. I know. Well, I got to take my daughter to school tomorrow, and I got a lot of grading to do tomorrow also. But um, I am going to guess that you guys are going to want me to continue for about another hour at least, right? You want to see case number two? How many people want to see case number two? If you want to see case number two, let me see. Objection! I love this thing, man. This thing is the best. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. Object head! Object head! <laughs> Can I get a yo for justice? We need to add a command. Let's see. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> oh god! All right, here we go. Turn about sisters. Let's do it up. Let's do it up, people. Yes, clearly save it. All right. Episode two. Turn about sisters. Ring. I actually don't need to do that. You guys can hear it for yourself. Beep. Hello? This is Maya. Oh, wait. Wait, no. This is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. I'm getting really confused. Okay. Sorry, I've been so busy. How you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey! I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame! I had to take the clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. This is such a setup. Why is she doing this, man? Papers? I is that the evidence, then? Hmm, well... There's a possibility that might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say, 9 o'clock, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like, burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay, we'll hit the usual joint. All right, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Recorded September 5th, 9.27 a.m. September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Fay and Company, Law Offices. <laughs> I love that. Uh. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fay, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Oh, you are not cogniferous of my background? Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. Oh, my dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry. But I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. <gasps> Oh, no! He killed Maya? Oh! Oh, no, he killed Maya. Oh, my God, no. Oh. What? Red, white, blue. What? Episode 2, Turnabout Sisters. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Fay and Company Law Offices. Oh, my God. That's terrible. What's up, Roix? Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh. 
That's strange. The chief must have gone home already. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. But what's that smell? Blood? Mia! Or maybe she's in her office. I smell blood, and that can't be good. Check and see if me and the chief's okay. Alright, I better... I wonder if I'm able to explore out here. I better just move in. Let's do it. That smell. Blood. <laughs> Sis! Someone's there. Chief? Chief! Chief! Who are you? Whoa. The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally, she was cold. Wow. Chief. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there's any clues here... She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the court record. Wow. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Glass shards added to the court record, all right. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? Here we got. Oh, a word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya, did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store, dated yesterday. Receipt added to the court record. All right. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. Hang on, I'll do that in a minute. Shards of glass are shattered on the floor. Means of the glass light stand. What about the window? There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel. <laughs> the Gatewater Hotel. Nice. Watergate? No, Gatewater. A nice, luxurious place. That's cute. Um... What do we got there? The Chief's Chair. Simple, functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in, too. Good. Thanks for the analysis of the chair, Phoenix. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, God bless it. I already read... Yes, I know about the chair. That's the chief's chair. This is not also the chief's chair, right? Just trying to figure out. It's like running into a wire on the floor. The 
Fay and Company ledger book. Everything's written in the Chief's ultra-neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Alright, what do we got on the phone here? Right, I better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please, come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me! She's holding a phone in her hand! Why does everyone have low-cut shirts in this? I'm gonna check that too. What's up, Splatter? Surprisingly, the chief is never good with machines. About all she used this PC for was email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. Alright. Perfectly normal office desk. The chief had a very particular policy about office decor. Spend big on stuff the clients use, but keep your own stuff simple. Look at the files. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. I know, Strike. Well, we don't have any other women yet. We just got Maya. This is where she filed her case records and recent rulings. Oh my god, again with the chief's chair. <laughs> Japan, that's why. It's something for the dads. Cute, cute. Yes, you probably you probably speak truth. Phone receivers with some screws. I better not use it. All right. Well, then I gotta move. Then let's go to law offices then. Yeah, Mia, and then her sister is Maya, right. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Uh-oh, I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya? Maya Faye. Maya Faye? Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. Th th that's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would she... Why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. Oh, whoa! Oh, boy. Police coming. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! All right. I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great. Just great. Maya. Wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me. Eek! This word Maya here mean anything to you? Uh, um, that... That's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood, eh? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Killer? I'm not- Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? Oh, a Columbo voice? Oh my gosh. Oh, let me see. Can I do a Columbo voice? Now- let me see if I can. I gotta, I gotta channel Peter Falk. 
Now, there's only there's only one thing I, I don't understand. See, I don't I don't understand exactly how this could have worked out that way. I was trying to do a like an Edward G. Robinson like bash, eh? That's what I was trying to do. Maya's younger Mia's younger sister Maya was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9.07 a.m. Detention Center. Visitor's room. Yeah, Columbo. Well, it's... I'm not, Yeah, I'm not great at Columbo, to be honest. I mean, I know Peter Falk. Obviously, I've seen Columbo, but I'm like... Yeah, j just one more question. Wait a minute. Bob Hoskins? What is this Bob Fa Bob Hoskins? Bob Hoskins. Give him an Eddie voice. Who is Bob Hoskins again? What's up, Club? What Bob Ho remind me of Bob Hoskins. Why who do I where is this from? I was thinking of like an you know, Oyashi. Yeah, Are you talking about like uh, or like Dashiell Hammett type of thing? Oh, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, from Who Framed Robert Roger Rabbit. Listen, man, unsubbed. All right, all right. I only saw Roger Rabbit once. I wasn't the craziest about Roger Rabbit in the world. I've only seen it once, so... Sorry. Sorry. It's my thing. Uh, let's see. What am I... I was trying to think about that, or also... Um, See, the thing is, I was thinking about doing also like a Dashiell Hammett, Maltese Falcon type thing, where he's just like, you know, I saw that she was guilty of the murder, but I couldn't really pin it on her. She was one of those dames that had legs a mile long and hair that take away your breath. And I knew that she was troubled the minute she walked into my office. I was thinking about doing something like that, but I feel like this guy, from the way he looks like, his name is Gumshoe and all the C stuff. I don't know. I don't know that that totally fits, you know. She was drawn that, she was drawn that hard way. No, can we skip the... Not that word, please, Messiah. Please. Not that word. That's just a quick purge, Messiah, but please not that word, okay? Um, and I've got to figure out why it is when I put words in that the filter doesn't pick them up. It's a little bit frustrating, so. Please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh! It's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's up to you. I better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like, like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought... It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. John Cena. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! Huh, so he crashed and burned? Hey, what's up, Cage Wisdom? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Ha! Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to trouble you. No, it's okay. It's, it's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... I know. All 
All right, let's talk about this. What is this thing about? I wanted to ask you about the murder weapon. Poor sis. Whoops. Hmm. Better not ask her about this now. What? How about this? The shards. This was lying next to the chief's body. I saw that too. Uh, they said they thought these were pieces of a broken light stand. Yeah, that seems about right. Though I'd never heard of a glass light stand before this. Remember that receipt? You mean the one with my name on it? Any idea why she... Absolutely none! Um, do you trust me? I trust you. I trust you. Why? Don't you think I did it too? No, I, I don't. It's just a hunch, but... That detective thinks I did it. Let's talk to Maya first. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Yes, you can dance if you want to. You can leave this place behind. Because if you don't dance and then you don't dance and you're no friends of mine. Law and order! <laughs> you can sound if you want to. Oh, good. Uh, acolytes? Like, like people in religious training. Well, what is it you do? Oh! Oh, it's something strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Let's talk about spirit mediums, shall we? So you're an acolyte. A, uh, medium in training? That's right. The Fae family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Because they're called Fae? Like, fairies? Is it possible that they're called fairies and fays because they understand the world from which they come? Hold it! <laughs> oh gosh. Wait a second, you said the Fay family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course! She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I. I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So, you're a real, honest to God, goodness spirit medium? With ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact me as spirit then? We could just ask her who killed her. I. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. Right, let's talk about the day of the crime. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes! Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes! That clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember! Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah! I forgot how to delete those things. Alright, let's see it. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right! Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Maze memo added to the court record. I know, right? Um. Huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? Like, could you get me out of a murder trial? Absolutely, I think I'm already doing that. Okay, thanks, I won't ask you for another favor because obviously that's the most important favor ever. Good gravy. Come on, lady. Exactly, works. This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Jeez, thanks, lady. All right. Sure, why not? 
I'll go ask. Thank you so much! I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? Has no parents. I... I see. Oh, don't worry. Leave it to me. Thank you! At the trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Well, what if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. Well, when will that happen? They're giving me until 4 o'clock this afternoon. I know, Apples. I was just thinking that. Visiting hours are almost up. I better hurry. Right. I'll be back. Let's get moving. Grossberg Law Offices. Let's go. September 6th. Grossberg Law Offices. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Not before you examine stuff I'm not going to. Let's, let's come on now. A table for clients. Hmm. An elegant ebony case, and if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. Even I could tell someone here's got money to burn. Okay, what else? That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. In case this guy's got a lot of money. The big boss, right? A solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Oh, I already saw that. What else we got? What about that chair? You like that chair? Because you're big on chairs. Expensive-looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive-looking books. Hmm, funny. They, they don't look like they've ever been read. There's a shock. What about that? Really? I wish it was a little bit more specific about what it was you were seeing. So that's also going to be expensive, blah, 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 blah. Let's let you wait for it. Dairy. <laughs> nice. Hey, Batty, what's up, man? Alright, uh... So we got the desk. Got that. Got the painting. I already did this. So I guess I have to come back? Interesting. Alright. Guess I gotta move. Strange, though. September 6th. Fay and Company Law Offices. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there. This is the crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were Detective Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right. That's your service. Uh, hang on. That's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. D yes, yes, sir. Be right there. Um, <clears throat> you're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. Mia's desk. Exactly. Perfectly clean, as always. The only thing it's missing is... Mia. Like that. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days.
There's a horrendous amount of legal books here. As scary as still is that me, I probably read all of these. Yeah, these lawyers reading law books, man. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. All right, let's talk to this guy. Let's talk to Gumshoe. Let's talk about Mia first. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Huh? You want to know the results, eh? Now don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right. All right, you can see the report, but that's all. Yay, I got the autopsy report. Got the autopsy report. Time of death, September 5th at 9 p.m. Cause single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. All right, what about Maya? Or Maya, rather. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal. This is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? I said he's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Uh, of course not. Never heard of him. Whoa! You call yourself a lawyer, pal? About four years ago, this Edgeworth guy became a prosecutor at the age of 20. Everyone says he's a genius. Surprised you don't- Of course I know him. I was just playing dumb. He's a cold, heartless machine who'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. There are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. There is broken glass at the crime scene, right? Uh, I think it's going... I'm a little worried about the deal, Snip, because it depends on how long. Because I have a feeling the Red Sox are going to overpay and be like, sure, we'll give you a seven-year contract. And that body is not designed to hold up. I feel he's going to be good for like two, three years, and then... So... There's broken glass at the crime scene, right? Hmm? Oh, that? Seems like a glass stand next to the victim fell over. The glass shards were pieces of the broken stand. About that. I was wondering, do you know anything about this? That statue? That's the murder weapon. Huh? He thinks the clock is just a statue, too. I'm starting to wish I'd never seen this thing. The badge, huh? What's that? Sorry, pal, but I got no info for the likes of you. There was a piece of paper next to the victim, wasn't there? Yeah, the one with the killer's name written on it. Are you sure that Maya Mia wrote it herself? Given the condition of the writing, it's hard to say if it's her handwriting or not. So there's no proof that Mia wrote it. I was wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. You think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Tell him straight. Hmm. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'd give it to me. Something the matter? Oh, no, it's just, you know, detective. Nope, I know nothing, pal. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it. Like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all the little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Huh? You're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here, you can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there, after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Ah, uh, Gumshoe, I can tell we're going to be friends, Gumshoe. I can already tell we're going to be friends. <laughs> Objection, the Red Sox are on All right, good. I got that evidence. I needed that. You haven't called in a while. This is the thing I want you to hold on to for me. Again, what is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker. It tells you the time. I should tell you it isn't worth talking right now. It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry, I put some papers inside it instead. Is that the evidence then? I'll leave that one up to your imagination. See you tonight at 9. I 
guess I've asked all the questions I need to. Y'all done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influence in the witness with your loyally ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. That's gonna be fun, that witness. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. April May. Really? April May. April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me your name. Miss May, huh? So you sent her home already then? Aha! You're trying your loyalty chicks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Let's do it. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. <laughs> no more to sell. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. Oh, I was doing this voice wrong. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Woo! Let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. A screwdriver? That's interesting, because the uh, receiver was uh, getting the screws removed. What's inside? Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? No touching! Ooh, bad!